Oh yeah. I mean, we're going to be here for hours, so like, sure we are. <laughs> I have faith in you. You won't trust me. All right. We will now call the city council meeting to order for September the 12th, 6 p.m. Please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight, Father. Lord, we just ask that you would give us wisdom, Father, that we would do your will, Father, not ours. Ask that we would make good decisions tonight, Lord. Ask that we would get everything done that we need to get done, Father, for the best interest of the city, yes. best interest of the taxpayer, Father, and in your will, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, if you'll please call the roll. <coughs> Council Member Gray. Here. Council Mem Member Spurlock. Here. Council Member Sutherland. Yeah, here. Deputy Mayor Bernard. Here. Mayor Anderson. Here. We have a quorum. All right, so we only have one item on the agenda tonight. However, it is has several parts to it. So, um, probably start out with some of the quickest things probably uh, the organizational chart I know that's something that the council will have to approve and the job descriptions so we should start there that's something everybody should have had time to review and uh, <laughs> when was that? We just got so, him five minutes ago. Just got him. We just got him we walked in the door. Nobody seen that? Oh we just saw yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah 15 minutes. Half well hour. we got nothing but time so <laughs> if anybody has any questions Now's the time. I mean, if there's something else that you guys want to start with, we can start there too. But well, I guess this, the organizational chart is as good as any because it's yeah. really the the picture of our employee um, base. And right. Ronnie's not here, so I'm hoping we get an answer. It says here in the green, um, plant operators. Is that the four plant operators? It doesn't have a number, but it's in plural. So we didn't have the number. I'm sorry, we didn't have the numbers on those because he wasn't here. He's in Georgia right now, okay. um, so I don't have the actual numbers on those. But uh, no, this does not include uh, the new positions. This is what we have right, right now. Right and now. I think he said we had three at the last meeting. We have three certified people right now, and he was going to be getting a fourth one. I was just trying to add it all up to see how many were there. And so this doesn't have any new positions posted on it. That is correct. All right. So that's a total of seven people in that department now. Um, mm. Yeah. Well, let's see. If you count the superintendent. If you count Ronnie, it's eight. Right. It would be eight because there's three as plant operators right now, and then the plus one that's not been hired yet. Okay, new, new, new position. Mm -hmm. So we have people in all those positions? Yes. Okay. So we're good on all street operators and all laborers and all of that. So they're not in here either. And how many are those that are missing off this list? That are are they in the budget? You Ricky's have got those in the budget. Is, don't you have vacant positions in there, Ricky? Unfilled. There, there are in the water and sewer fund. Um, uh, but general fund all of those have been taken out okay so general fund would be on the street side yes yes right so that one is done with those seven i'm just asking because it's, i add them up one two three four five six seven that includes the superintendent so you're done with that is what i'm getting at i guess one of the questions is on and i know i'm going to bounce around on the old budget i'll call it the workshop budget on the workshop budget there were positions that were not in there and then on the Monday meeting of this week there were positions added into it so if there's positions being added into it in the the, the meeting has that changed in the what was provided to us tonight I mean have we ha have we increased uh, any more positions in this budget handed to us tonight no do you know how many there are in here that are new I knew that was going to come up. We, okay. were, we were just trying to get your positions in there, and we didn't get the total numbers. I'm sorry. All right. 
So I'm, I'm, one of the questions then is if the positions are, are in here, but you don't know how many are in there, are they in yeah. included as a new position written out or are they in here as general payroll? This is what you have right now. This okay. is your current budget. Okay. So are we trying to get a total number of employees? Yeah, or? I'm trying to see how gotcha. many we're hiring. We should be able to add that up. Could we not off, a bit off this list? But he doesn't know how many new okay. ones we have. Okay. Right, no, do, I, do you? That's on the list that we've, we've given you. On what list? The 11 items that we were discussing. On the so, okay, I just, that's the one that was just, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So the positions on the 11 are not in the chart. That is correct. Okay. Repeat that, they're not in the... The They're organization not chart is your current budget okay. positions. Okay. Right. So none of these that were originally added, none of those are in there because they've all been cut. So both of these. Now the, the yes. only, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The only one that is on this organizational chart that says vacant is the airport manager. That is, I, I, it's on there, but that that is in the budget as a requested position. Okay, and then but that's the extra not in those plant, eleven. Okay, and then the extra plant operator is in the budget as well. Yes. 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 So you've removed financial analyst, full-time director, all those, are the, all these right here on this sheet that was given. These, I don't know, is that eleven? Yeah. The, the next page shows it better. You got cut IT specialist. Okay. I didn't look at these because I mean I was looking at clerk. the other budget. Okay. Cut those those are not on the organizational chart. Okay. Right. And they're not in the budget. They are not in the budget. Okay unless you choose to put them in there. And we're working from the budget that we was working from last Monday night. Monday, Monday night. night. That's okay. correct. So that's the one I Nothing, looked at. Nothing's changed since then. Okay. Well, we yeah. should, should qualify that. Yeah. The only thing that has changed is those items that you told us to take out. Gotcha. And that's that list that you have there that comes to approximately $840,000. All out of general fund? Correct. Yeah. Uh, operating supplies weren't on the original 11, though, were they? Not that I can see. The operating supplies were, that's uh, from the uh, fire department. That is the operating supplies there. And that was a reduction from the workshop. Rick, let me ask you a question. From the one that we, the budget that was working on on Monday night, um, does that one include the three percent? I'm gonna call it cost of living allowance that the uh, I should say soldiers for the, union, em the union employees. You're talking about? Yes. yes. It does include the three percent for the union employees, and it currently includes three percent for the non-union employees, because even though it was discussed. Council did not give a specific direction to remove that out. It was discussed, and there was several council members that did not want that in the budget necessarily, but there was no, no vote specifically to take that out. If you okay. want that taken out, that will further reduce uh, your general fund budget as well as the budget for your other funds well i think it needs to be really clear that the union not all of them are going to get a step raise because they're all not all in the same year and not every union member gets a step raise every year it's every other year firefighters are the same it just depends on the length of, of service and then, then the amount so not every union employee is going to get a step raise so if that's the three percent you're, you're talking about not everyone's going to get it but what you were saying at the last budget was that administration and management were all going to get a three percent and I believe in the union rules it says that if you're going to give it to one you got to give it to all so step raises don't count they would have to get a three percent cola as much as the department heads I don't know that you can single out a single group and say you're going to get it and you're not if you're giving colas out. So I don't know that that is a 
agreement issue in regards to the unions you'd have to check and see but i would double check on that because i don't think that you can carve out any people to get a raise and then others don't it's supposed to be unison if it's a cola so you're saying it's not possible for union people to have three percent but non-union people to not no have if you're going to do it for one you got to do it for all uh fired up it's it's the parody everyone gets it even so, though they're in a union and some are not correct so let's just say we know that union employees every other year get a step raise depending on the year they were hired. Right. Okay, they automatically get it. So what you're saying is they're factored in here as their automatic step raise. That's not a 3% increase. That's an automatic step raise. It's not a COLA. It's not. A COLA would be across the board and they would get that on top of their step raise. That's right. I agree. Yeah. Now that that's how it works. Great. So if you're giving raises to management, the union rules say if you're going to give a COLA to anybody, they get it as well. So there's a larger financial impact. And I'm not sure on that, but I'm pretty no, sure. Right. So I think that that has to be looked at. You just can't do it for one and not do it for the rest of them. How so much? Go ahead, Ricky. Well, the question I was going to ask is, is the reverse of that true also? Explain uh, that. If the non-union employees, I mean the union employees get um, a step increase, does that mean that your non-union supervisory employees get an increase? No, because yeah. one has a contract, the other one doesn't. So it's not a COLA, it's a performance raise. Yeah. So when you're saying 3%, it's a performance-based raise, not a COLA. If you do COLA, it's got to be across the board, and that's 3% of your entire payroll. That's what I was thinking that, that this was. Is that what's happening here? There is three, <clears throat> currently there is 3% in there for all current employees. Including the union, and that also includes their own step raise. So some will be so seeing a 5% raise or 6% yeah. raise. There's 3% that's plugged in. So you've done 3% uh, across the board on top of their union hike? No. There's three percent increase that's in there. All right. This this that is just budgeted. We're not. You know, this is an actual no, giving them the funds. So I know, but if we're talking about it and it's in here, right. that's three percent of the entire payroll of our city. Yeah. And that's a commitment for perpetuity because it's a cola. Right. You just asked him what's budgeted, and he just told you that, that what's budgeted is three percent for all. For that's, everybody. Right. That's but currently what's on the it's sheet. It's up to up to council to decide whether it's a uh, cola or whether it's a step in uh, not a step increase, but a performance increase right for your employees that are not part of the union right so we need to decide what we want to do for them here tonight well, while you're thinking about that I have a question comparing the memorandum to the sheet you gave us tonight on uh, the memorandum the 11 things were cut you said that was approximately eight hundred forty thousand dollars to balance the budget on this sheet, you showed us whether well, it's about eight hundred forty thousand, but then you added another seventy-nine thousand, as well as three other positions for another hundred and thirty-four thousand. So why are we removing another hundred thirty-four thousand if the eight hundred forty already balanced it? That needs explanation. If you'll hold on just a second, okay. Let me get to that sheet. Um, um, I sort of like you got in there twice. I mean. You're looking at the uh, 34,000, 75,000, and 25,000? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. What that, what that is, is when you eliminated, uh, eliminate the positions, you eliminate the fire inspector position, that also means that now you cannot have a reduction to the contract you have with the individual that does the fire inspections. So you've got to add that back into your budget to be able to do your fire inspections. So the three see, items on the bottom. So that's were added that's back. where the thirty-four thousand is there because we had built in a reduction to the contract with the current uh, firm that does the fire inspections. Uh, so based on the fact that we would have an in-house fire inspector. You wouldn't have him for the entire year, so we didn't plug in to reduce it for the entire year. We only plugged in to reduce it for the point in time in which the individual would be able to complete the training to be able to do the fire inspections. Okay. So that's why the 34000 has to be added back in. 
Otherwise, you're going to end up short on money. Okay. So you're uh, adding the 75000 back in now, for the fire union also? The fire union ne negotiations, um, there's $75,000 that's plugged into reserve uh, for those negotiations. And those negotiations haven't happened yet? Correct. Right. Okay. And so that's with it being in your reserve for continued contingencies I'm sorry it's a tongue twister reserve for contingencies for it to come out of your reserve for contingencies and to be used it has to have council approval it can't just be taken out and used for whatever purpose right it has to have council approval for it to come out of your reserve for contingency then what about the twenty-five thousand for no payroll software? I right. thought that's already on if you, the eleven. If you don't have the payroll software for the payroll to be done in-house, then we still have to continue the services through the CPA firm that we are currently with Wix utilizing. Brown and Williams. Wix Brown and Williams. So you can't you can't just t look at one thing without looking at the how it impacts the budget in other areas and th that's why I put those areas because if these reductions are made you have to take this into account that has to be added back into the budget okay 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 and do you do you understand the reasoning behind that mostly otherwise you bust your budget okay okay so is there any further questions on that portion? I'd rather just start on page one and just go through it if you well okay. let's just finish this one okay that one segment is there anything other questions on this this sheet of paper here that we were just discussing well we might have to come okay. to it later on as we go through the budget so yes. I just like to not totally dismiss it anymore right. so I agree that's fine okay so <coughs> back to the organizational chart do we have any do we want to take any action on that we have to approve the uh, organizational chart and the job descriptions right to so even be added to the budget right so that kind of that's a kind of a number one item so we should get that are you going to do those together say that again are you going to um, vote on those together or separate separate yeah thank you Can I get at, at least for me and, and let me understand oh, can I get the materials I, I just so I can play along? Yep. Yeah, you're going to give him any with you. You want to play with to, us? I have a chance to look over those, so I don't know why I would vote for that if I didn't have enough time. We just got this tonight. Thanks. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. Um, the new positions, or you said they're not in here, right? That is correct. Okay. Okay, starting with the job positions, job, yeah, job descriptions rather. Okay. We have the public work superintendent. Okay, we wrote this one today because actually we've been working on it for a couple of days, but we wrote that and finished it up because there was no job description anywhere for the public work superintendent that Robert Trevino has. Okay, public work. We I thought that was a new, that's not the new department? No, this is okay. a current job. So this was I was under the impression that department heads were the executive level and that's not executive level so it doesn't have to be approved okay I believe it was asked for all of them so no yeah. department it, um, the executive level okay and the executive level are the ones that were hired recently in executive level positions that were placed in the FRS so contribution. non issue to me the uh, I'm, you know I can defer that to Jerry but when you look at the um, job description of a department head I'm sorry of a supervisor it's not the same as a director okay. um, so the way I see it would these classify as FRS 25 percent no only directors do okay a, a, you know a, a department head as in a director who manages a plethora of individuals <coughs> how about the utilities manager um, I don't know I think is the manager a is director it, I mean is it or is it just the director of infrastructure I think is, is what you're referring to right it says utilities manager we have a utilities manager and a utilities director? Public Works Superintendent. No, you have an infrastructure director that's right. over the utilities director. Utilities so manager, rather. 
So the utilities manager, this is not good now? The util utility so manager? Yeah, that's a totally <laughs> separate position. That's not a director. Is this the utility superintendent, perhaps? I don't know. No. They don't say the yeah. same no, I think he's either. saying the director of infrastructure is the only director. And then yeah. under that, you have the GIS tech, the utility superintendent, which has hit, uh, his own department, and the public works superintendent, which has his own department. Okay. So do we have to approve this? Does council have to approve this? Job if it's different than what you had before, yeah. Oh, that's B. Right. And we don't know if it's different than Well, before. actually, you know what? I take that back. No, I don't because think so. the director is the same, has right. been the same. And I think you discussed that at the last meeting, yeah. that you weren't sure whether you would actually approve that department, but you didn't care at this point because it's been around for so long. If that's your point of view, then when you do the rest of them, it'd just be a good idea just to go ahead and approve it just in case. Right. Okay. So, so Jerry. Yes, okay, go ahead. No, you go ahead. This, um, so the, the public works superintendent, that is not a department, that is a department head? No, no, it is not. No. The department heads, according to the FRS engagement that was put into the newspaper, were director of finance, city clerk, um, human resource director and director of infrastructure. Those four individuals are the ones that I, in my mind, were the director positions as executive. Could you say those again? Um, okay. Director of finance, city clerk, human resources, and director of infrastructure. Okay. You don't want to write any paper. The fire department had previously had a contract and that job description had been approved eons ago and it's already been in place and it's been in place the finance director has always been there so we've always had a finance director so previous council may have already approved that one we have never had an hr director and we have never had a city clerk in an executive position to me those are the two positions that have not been approved but you guys can defer and look at the other ones if you want but okay so it sounds like most of the discussion are with those two is there any of Correct. the others that anyone wishes to discuss uh, I agree with that okay so we will just pick those two out and start there this some um, CPA consultant th this is an outside agent an outside company is yes. it not now, yeah I don't, I don't think that should be below the line I think that should be up um, uh, over at finance yeah maybe off of the side of finance okay just Mike just my um, so David I have a question for you in regards for example the GIS tech um, we had Manuel Cortazal who was GIS as well as city clerk and you placed him in the executive level FRS and then he retired so how does that GIS now fit into that when that was part of his job duties when he was turned into executive He's no longer here, so I mean that position isn't here, but half of it is, which is the GIS we, tech. We went back to the GIS tech, separated that away from the city clerk. Okay. So then it comes down to the city clerk and the human resource manager. So right. those are the positions that you're wanting to be executive, right? Okay. If you're defining executive as the FRS 25% that you yeah. keep talking about, I've already told you we've we're in the process of removing that I've, we've we've done away with it because I made a mistake on it so they're not executive that is correct we're okay. taking them out of that designation okay. but but you created single jobs that are brand new to the city where there are single jobs and you said even though they're not getting the FRS they were still executive I asked you is it an executive position you said yes so if it's not an executive department head position, then how do you validate the salaries? Because they're not managed, they're not manager salaries, they're director salaries. Wouldn't we be validating them by approving them? Yeah, you yeah. would, but then you'd be creating two executive positions. Right, but that's what all this discussion is gonna be right. about. Right, and so do you think these are executive positions? Okay, well that, that's what we have to decide as right that's where we're going that's why I'm asking him Got is it. city clerk a director position or is it a regular like a supervisor I think the city clerk is a director position okay I don't okay no, it, it's a matter for a vote right and I, I would just uh, urge you to uh, if somebody makes a motion to approve the salaries that were they were paid they're not posted they didn't give us we the salaries know what they are okay at the point that you do if I'm not here <laughs> Then, then I would just simply say that you need you need also um, uh, approve what has been done up to this date. Right. Which that could be approved at our next 
council meeting, correct? Yes, good. Okay. So all of the salaries for all of these job descriptions that you provided tonight, we need to have those at our next council meeting as well. Is that in the budget, Ricky? They could be in the budget, but I can't find a chart person in here. I don't know where she's mixed in with something else, so I can't tell what her rate is. And not only that, but it doesn't give you the job scale, and it's the job scale that we approve, not the actual pay. So they could the be paid anything. With, yeah, we're not allowed to approve what they get paid. All yeah. we can approve is their scale. bottom to top. That's a all window, we can yeah. approve. Okay. That's what we have authority to do per the ordinance. Right. But I just wanted David to, you know, on the city clerk, for example, and, you know, last week I apologized to Miss Gay for, you know, her sitting there and all, but you know what? I'm not the one that should be apologizing. I think it's you, David, because apologize we are what? in this position because you brought her in. <laughs> what did she come in as? A city clerk? Yes. But you advertised city clerk slash grant writer. Okay. Right? And the pay scale was based on that. And then you told me that she had never written a grant in her life. So now we're paying her for city clerk slash grant writer and she doesn't do grants. And, and now she's executive. So how is that an executive And position? no precedent has ever been set by the city of Avon Park to change a job title in the middle of a job interview or anything else. Well, it's never been done. I don't recall that being the case, but the issue there is that if you'd only advertised a city clerk and eliminated the grant writer part of it, then you would have had 500 more applications in there of just city that. clerk positions. I doubt that. Well, Shoulda, but shoulda, coulda, woulda. All we're, all we're no, concerned about is going forward. Anyway. Right, and we are trying to move forward. So we don't have a job scale on this. The job description that she was hired to do is not the function that she's currently doing. All city clerks in the past were a function of numerous positions. You had one well. person doing a bunch of different things and city clerk was part of it. City clerk was a part-time position. Bonnie Barwick did it part-time. Yeah. So in recent history, that's true. Right. But not right. in not in long history. Actually, in long yes. Hist in long history, the city clerk was the city manager. The city no. clerk ran everything. That was before the charter changed. That is not so correct. Well, yeah, you can anybody you can make a motion but anytime you want to. If you have when the charter time. changed to go to a city manager form of government but in 1985 or 1986, mm -hmm. you still had a full time city clerk. That was Virginia Henderson. And Who then yeah. and then C B was hired when she became city manager. Let, let me just simply say that. Most of this is, is really within his purview anyway. Thank you. But, um, but. that you know, you need to approve scales, as I mentioned at the right. last meeting, and, and you mentioned this a while ago, ranges of salary. So this can be avoided. Mm -hmm. You know, this kind of situation can be avoided because at that point you said you can pay the person anywhere within this range, and if, th if they're not worth it, then that's your problem, not ours. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so can can we make those scales here tonight? Yeah, there's no reason why you can't do the scales tonight if you wish. Y y can, can I make a motion that we change the uh, title from uh, director to uh, uh, executive to just manager of what? Oh, what? Okay, that's going to go. That's going to be for the city clerk for the human resources. Those two we're talking about. It just says city clerk. Where does it say director? The thing about the city clerk she is that- She was hired it, as a director. Yeah, she was hired as a director. The charter says you have a city clerk. Historically, it was a civil service job. And every position that's had city clerk has had numerous other qualities that's underneath. That's not true, it. Maria. Yes, it is. It's not. I was there, I know. I get it, you were there in recent history. I understand that. Right, but, but what I'm getting Avon at Avon Park's is very old. I do get that, but you just don't willy-nilly create a whole new position uh, and, I understand and pretend that. It's, it's all well, that when it's, it wasn't all that. It's still within your purview to decide whether this is a director position or not. Right. And um, so, I mean, if your the motion is motion to, to change the title from director to, uh, I don't know if I get that again, manager. In which positions again? For, for city clerk and for human resource director. Okay. So you're going to change the city clerk to city clerk manager? change her title well, er, actually you're what you're referring to are the responsibilities to be cons yeah. considered management as opposed okay, to okay you want to do one at a time yeah okay yes, let's do the city clerk we don't have a job scale okay. stanley to, to say what so it is so you want to that wait on it well a, a motion's been point. made is there a second for that I, motion uh, please restate the motion what, what is this, what is the motion well, I was wanting to change it from executive director to a manager position. 
but we don't really have a uh, job description with the uh, money involved, so maybe I need to wait on that motion. Are you retracting the motion? I'm going to retract my motion. Okay. But doesn't have a second anyway. Garrett? Yes. I'd like to say something. I have been in local government for over 16 years, and most of that I have been in the clerk's office or in the clerk's position. I have always been a director. I am a certified master clerk. It took me 11 years to get that designation. The clerk's job and responsibility is to do everything that they can to keep the city legal. There's a lot of compliance issues that we deal with. There's compliance issues here that I've walked into. I don't just do agendas and minutes. I am involved right now in a, a whole basement full of records that should have been under a retention schedule and gotten rid of or put in place like they're supposed to be that has never been done for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And my job, uh, Monday, I was doing a GIS job for the Department of Revenue all day, and I have to do it again for them for the communication services taxes. I don't do just one thing. I do a lot of things, and I have a lot of experience in many areas of local government, and I think that should speak to something. I was making $70,000 a year before I came here. I'm not making that now, and that was okay because I am closer to, to my home from the commute I was making then, and that's worth something to me, although I wasn't spending $7,000 to drive that far all year. But I have wanted to work here and be a part of Avon Park. I applied when twice when Administrative Director of Services was advertised, and I never got an interview or anything then, but I think that my record my references speaks for itself and I'm sorry if you don't think that I'm worth it but I feel that I am and I feel that I am a great asset to this city and that there's a lot I can do to help this city move forward from where it's at. Ms. Gay, may I just address one issue here? Yes. When you applied for this job, the job description was vastly different than what was provided to us tonight. The job description was city clerk grant writer mm -hmm. however I have applied for jobs in the past that were multiple faceted and just like I told them in the interview I have never written a grant can I keep up with the files and the administration part of it yes because I've done that with very you know with very many grant um, agencies but no I have never written one but I don't think that you know if with my qualifications, I don't think that that should have disqualified me from the position. But the job description we have don't say grant writer. No, the one I have was the one that was posted on the city's website as well as it, it was a link to the Florida League of Cities. It was the one that was posted there at $50,000. But my job description now doesn't include grant writing. Right. Because it's been changed because of this particular issue right now. Because, because my job, my actual job doesn't include grant writing now. Right, but it's up to this council if we want to go forward right. with that so or not. Right, so do we have a right. grant writer no. now? Right. No, we don't. So we're going to pay another chunk of change for that. We don't have an open position for that, Maria. Well, I'm and let me address the Florida League of Cities $50,000 thing. I've already addressed this with you before, but you keep bringing it up, so I feel like I have to correct that. That was a mistake done by the Florida League of Cities, and they acknowledge that. We never gave them the price of $50,000. We, at that time, were not putting prices on what our jobs were. Well, that's interesting because I called them as well, and the only ones that can do that are the ones that have the access with the password to that website. So, David, you know, you can say what you want. I will send you the email where we sent it that's to you. Okay. There was no money put on it. That's okay. That's all right. Regardless of that, right. it was never advertised as 64000 on Indeed.com either. 
No, none of them were put at, at, that's at my any point. price. That's my point, is that you don't have, that. remember we had this conversation, is that we're not putting the parameters in the website. It disallows highly qualified individuals to apply for jobs, but they don't because they think that they can't get it because it has certain aspects in the job description that don't apply to them. So, you know, you could have had, maybe you would have had a grant writer and not hired them, only, you only hired them because they were a grant writer and not a city clerk. It could have worked the other way around. Well, so, you know. Jerry, what I, I just simply to say? say that um, in, in the other cities that I represent, they have sent people to be trained as grant writers. There are a number of classes that are given around the state at various times. And so I, I would encourage you to do that rather than having a whole department for that particular thing. Um, and it is your purview to either select or reject departments. Um, but let me observe, without taking any position, please understand, <coughs> that yes getting um the um uh, master clerk's designation is not easy to do and, and it does require i mean i i haven't dealt with anybody who's got gotten one yet i know i have somebody in san antonio who's um working on it and um, um i know most city clerks are a lot i should say most but many city clerks are actually charter positions as officers in line with along with the city the uh, city attorney and police chief yeah. So I, I guess I the, excuse me just a second. I guess the issue that I have with all due respect is that I just go by comparison of what we paid the previous city clerks. There's no doubt in my mind that you have the degrees or experience and the knowledge to say uh, your qualifications are way above anybody that's ever been in that, in that city seat as far as I can tell. I guess the difference is maybe those qualify qualifications are great for a larger city that it can afford to pay somebody 60, 70,000, 80,000 with benefits and so forth. It's just unusual for me to see a city clerk position that when we hired, when we made Manny Corzell, I think that's how he says his name. Corzell. Corzell, the, the city clerk, David bragged about how he got him for $20,000 extra great deal fine even though he had two full to full-time jobs I don't know how he did that together and then of course previous year after that we before that we had we actually had a girl part-time I don't know how, how long she lasted but then we had Bonnie Barwick I think she made less than thirty thousand dollars so I guess that the hard thing to understand is the clerks that we've had that I've known for the salaries that they've made all of a sudden you're bringing in a clerk that is let's just say you're overqualified to do the job and I don't know whether the budget satisfies that I do say one thing in your favor though I know that the records are a complete mess and if you could get the records up to date then maybe you'd be worth the salary you're, that you're paying but uh, it's just hard for me as a representative of the taxpayers to say that we're going to have a city clerk that went from twenty thousand dollars to sixty some thousand like that the place I just came from, it was a small town of 2,700 people. And I brought that town in six and a half years, I brought that town to paperless. And they're very grateful for it. And I mean, and that's something that, you know, I don't know if you even want to go paperless here, but there's a lot of records that have to be gone through. And, that, and that's just not, you know, that's just not a piece of cake job for anybody. Do you mind if I ask you one question without, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt you, but uh, do you feel that the job that you're going to do for the city uh, is way above and beyond what this piece of paper says I it's do. going to be? I do. Okay. Could you briefly just tell us, other than the record keeping, is what you're going to be doing or getting paid to do that's different than this thing? Yes, and I am willing to go take classes to learn how to write grants, but I will... While I'm here, and I, ho I was hoping to be here until I retire, but um, while I'm here, I will get the records straightened out. I will get the agendas done timely and everything. I mean, there's even different ways that the agendas can be done that could be even easier for, for the council to use and understand, easier for staff as well. Um, I will back up the city manager with everything that he's working on. I'll be happy to help people with planning and zoning 
questions as far as land use and zoning that type of thing I've done that before I've helped people with applications for variances and special exceptions um, I can help with some of the um, uh, finance uh, you know I, I I I don't want to be a finance director by any means but I'm willing to help everyone. I've always been a team player. I've always gotten along with everyone that I've worked with. I've always gotten along with my council members, and I want to have that relationship here as well. I, you know, I don't, if somebody doesn't like me or like what I do, I mean, that is what it is, but I feel like I bring a lot of experience and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make this a better city. Uh, let me just observe, in, in the, the 10 years that I've been here, we, and I, I have not worked with Kim really just briefly, okay, mm -hmm. but the, the past clerks that I've worked with, some, not all, but some, have really been more secretarial, just as you see yeah. on some of your things. Right. Um, but really that position should, they should be knowing what kind of notice has to go out for different types of ordinances and resolutions and that's the sort of things that uh, the clerk knows I you know we've had um, annexations that had to come back because they didn't have proper notice and then I had to draft up a whole mem uh, six page memo on how to do proper notice for annexations which and I didn't have to do and I'm looking into that right now because it still may be an issue from the past so I mean that's the sort of thing that the, the a real clerk for a city um, should do um, just throwing that out there I know that um, you know economics is another big issue for you but, but, but you know it's not fair for her to have to be here and defend her position the, the way it is and to say the things she's I had hate to it. say tonight. I absolutely hate that, it and that's I said not this right. last week that's been wrong I, from the I, day I, one because it, the uh, it hurts my the heart. city clerk job description should match what was advertised and it's been changed it's clear it's been changed well and we it's not right for her to defend where she's at and d do what she's got to no, do. No, I'm not begrudging her. I think that you're I, highly I'm qualified. Not I, know what I, I think it's I, and I agree with you, but I just I, I despise the position we're in because we have this much authority over the city other than budget. City manager has this much, and the little bit that we have, you have usurped our authority. You took it away from us, and now we're that. in this predicament trying to fix it. So I like to move on with this issue and figure out what the job rate is. We don't have a scale that we can approve for this department head. We do have a scale. We can make that scale right now. Well, I don't know that you can just yank it out of the sky. Uh, city we clerk in Sebring makes 40000 She's been doing it for 20 years. Well, it so depends on what. Start it, at 40? Well, if you'll hear where, me out. It where depends did you get that figure? I spoke to her. She makes forty two. Okay. According to the record, she's making 64000 Well, that's with her pension. It's regardless, regardless, we have the opportunity to set what level of city clerk position that we want here in the city. Do we want someone who is more of a secretary or do we want a full service city clerk? We have that right. That's what we're trying to do here tonight. It doesn't have to be a long drawn out complicated thing. We just have to decide to ourselves what do we want to do. Personally, I like the idea of having a very professional, very qualified city clerk because in my opinion, there's been a great many things that have been dropped. The ball has been dropped many, many times in the past. I feel that we need a professional person in that position to make sure that all of our notices are done, make sure that we're legal beagle 100% of the time. I'm willing to pay for that service. So I, for one, am for having a qualified professional city clerk as a director position. But I'm only one person, so the rest of the council has to decide, do they want more of a secretary or do they want a full service? If you have go with a secretary position, yes, you may be able to get one for 30, 40, 50, whatever. This is what we have right now, so we can either accept that or deny that. But it doesn't have to be on and on and on. I, I believe personally that we do need a more qualified person in that position because I, I know from everybody I've heard in the past our records are a complete mess, that you can't even find half the records. And um, I guess, I guess the, what was the salary advertised for this job position? We did not advertise a salary with it. So that's a mistake we made, right? Don't you agree? I, no, I don't agree. Okay. You all told me um, several, six weeks ago to start posting salaries on it, and we're doing that now. Okay. <laughs> when did well, you hire her? When did I hire her? Yeah, when was she hired? I started February, on August no. 16th. When? I'm sorry. August, August. 16th. 
August, and you said six weeks ago. I mean, what she wouldn't don't, come. Don't hold me to that. I'm not. I'm not sure when that was. We had advertised the job prior to that. Once y'all told me to start putting the salaries on there, that's what we did. I interviewed in June. There. Thank you. Okay. Well, see, I don't think it is a council. Should we be setting the salary for that job? We no, you should range. We're going to set a range. Is what you right. can yeah, do. Yeah, a range. That's right. part of the job description. Right. Um, and and. Um, um, and I mean, by the way, yeah. Jerry, the purpose for setting the salary range is because he could say it's one hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars, which is why we have to set the range. Which well, is why well, we're I here tonight to do that. So mm -hmm. let's just do it and be done with yeah. it. And, and ultimately, he he answers to you anyway. Right. We so. need to set the range. Okay. That will eliminate all this going forward. Well, let, so can I say something before yeah, we move on, ahead. if you don't mind? I've been up here for over at least 20 years, and the um, city clerk position has always been a secretarial position. True enough, at our last administration, we had our attorney trying to get the um, uh, um, records straight. We had several city managers trying to get it straight. They are a mess. They have been a mess for quite some time and wasn't able to do so. So my opinion, to have a person that's certified and that could do this job to get us on the right track, I think would be admirable for the city of Avon Park. As far as when, how much the salary is, I don't know, because I, I have no, no knowledge of how much that would cost us to get it like in her range. I know she said at her last position she made six seventy thousand dollars, and yes. this one she started out at sixty four thousand. Sixty three. Sixty three. Okay, that's my error. And with sixty three thousand dollars for the position to have a certified master city clerk, with the understanding that she could and was willing and able to get our record straight, it is a mess. Right. It has been a mess for quite some time. So, so you're going to alleviate the uh, grant writer from that position that she applied for when she did the job? Well, I don't sure. think you need to do that. I mean, you could. she could go to class. Well, here's what my point is, is right here. Every time I turn around, we're hiring another person. We're yeah, hiring another person. We're hiring another person. So here we are. We're going to hire a grant writer now. No, if we pay her not 64, I'm for no. that. No, no, no. Someone's going to have to write a grant. We're going to pay her 60. What are we going to pay her? What are we going to pay a grant writer? Well, I'm saying is that she could go for training or anybody on the staff. Can go How's she going to straighten the mess because the records are in such out if she's going to do both jobs? Stanley, we get grants all the time. We don't have I'm a sorry? We get grants all the time. We don't have a designated grant writer, but we still process grants all the time. Danielle does a whole bunch of them. I think what, what Stanley may be saying is that, that we need and a great writer. Department. And I think this, right. this um, council and other councils up here has, has, has at least talked about hiring a grant writer or having a grant writer right. on board. There's been many grants written from several yeah. different departments. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been one single person that's handled but all the grants. But it's about the compliance. You got yeah. dinged by the audit about 10 years ago by not having compliance and oversight. Think of the, of the shift that has happened in the past. No, I know there has been a shift it's and there have not been around. a lot of grants written. There have not. It's only the ones that automatically come to us with the airport. I have stuff one like question. That. What is at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that we don't have a grant. Right? We're dealing with the city. What is the city clerk right salary right now? 63. 63. Right. So is that the what thing you is started off? Okay. I'll make a motion right now that we make the city managers pay scale. City manager? City, uh, clerk. city clerk between forty and sixty three thousand dollars. How much? Between forty thousand to sixty three thousand max. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Discussion? I need a minute. You need a minute? Because I want to see what it says in the in the budget. She's posted in a budget of sixty six thousand six hundred and seventy. That's right. That's why it's I left at what she's making now. I think I can accept that. It's budgeted as a cost to the city. That doesn't necessarily mean that she's getting no, no. It's the proposed increment. That's what's in there. That's that what I'm just saying. With the three percent. What is that? That was with the three percent. But she won't get it because will she? Not if you limit it to sixty-three thousand. Not if you limit it to this. Not if we okay. pass the motion, or or not even pass the three percent. Right. We haven't done any of that yet. This right. is the first thing. If you leave it at 63, there's no room for improvement. There's no room to move up. She's stuck at that job making 63 for the next 15 years. 
No, for that year. You can change well, it then, every yeah. year. Okay, then it has to be approved every year. Because well, you it's can, another well, change if, in your budget. If you like the level of service that we're getting from that city clerk and having that situation, then we can continue that. But you can also eliminate it next year or you can up it next year. Every year we have an opportunity to change this. Yeah. So it's one year if the council chooses. So we have a motion and a second. Further questions? But yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Now, this would be a department head and not a department head. I'm still confused on that one. She has no That's subordinates. Up to you. That's up to you. Yeah, I mean, right. if, she, if she gets the subordinates, he can give her subordinates. She might end up needing a, a clerk to help move things around and, you know. But we don't have that. We, that's not in No, budget, I'm just saying right? five it's years down budgeted, the line, six yeah. years down the line, she's, you know, well, department right. head will give her the position to be managerial as so well. So she would just be as a, a regular employee, no department head. Am I understanding that correctly? No. No, no. she's no. be a department head. She will be a department right? head. See, mm -hmm. I got it reversed. Yeah, I'm sorry. yeah that's right. why we're discussing yeah. this. Okay. If it not, then it wouldn't have been an issue at all. Okay. Right. Does the, does the part-time city clerk work under her? Isn't Melinda's job as a part-time city clerk? Or what's her position? No, what she's just city she's clerk? just um, <laughs> an assistant. She's just what? an assistant receptionist. We don't have a part-time. That's all she's no, a receptionist. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was assistant to what? Well, she's secretarial. Well. She's just like an office right. clerk. An administrative assistant. Yeah. She's up. She's up there part-time answering the phone, things like this. She's only there in the mornings. Well, I don't know Linda. She's okay, the first person you walk in on the right-hand side. Okay. Further questions. Any? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Spurlock? No. Council Member Sutherland? No. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed three to two. Thank you. Thank you. Director of Human Resources? What is the salary being paid to that right now? 72, I believe. Is that minus the 12,000 that was added at one time, or is that included? No, that includes it. Okay. So this is. Now what is the next one you say? Human Resources Director. She's currently being paid 72,000. We need to decide what we want to do with this one the same as we just did any thoughts questions well I'd like David to tell us why he wants to a director versus having a manager I believe it's a director level position it's what did you say David I'm sorry I believe it's a director level position I think it's your HR department and your risk management department is incredibly vital to the administration and I believe it to be executive level. So when she's a risk manager, I mean she's gonna be evaluating uh, circumstances of liability and yes. and so on? And she she's, does. Got, she's got experience doing that? Yes. David, when you hired her, then why didn't you hire director level or have it as director level when she was advertised? I hired her at we had advertised at the HR manager risk manager I believe mm -hmm. if I'm, I'm not sure I don't have the job description in front of me at that time but when I interviewed her I recognized that she had some very good credentials I recognized that she had some very good abilities and watching her work for a few weeks is why I made the decision to change the job title and bumper and pay and you also change your job description to some extent yes Can anybody tell um, me what page or uh, Salary is on. I can't you see it. And the budget. The what is it? Human, human resource director. What page does it show her salary and the budget? He's looking for it. Okay. Jerry, was you about to say something? Well, once again, I have no um, stake in this, but I I, I was look, trying to look up. Um, there there are some special circumstances under the Public Records Act where if you have a, a risk manager, is why I asked him the question. If you have a risk manager that um, you can get information about an event that occurred that caused an accident and it, that can't be discovered as part of uh, the Public Records Act and um, it, it becomes attorney-client privilege which is very difficult in cities I, I have to deal with that issue all the time 
and I, it just concerns me. That's my only comment about that. Um, you know, I don't. It, it, I'm not trying. Like I said. Yeah, I but we didn't even open up the contract with the fire department before we gave them a raise. I, <laughs> all I'm doing is just commenting as to a reason why that would have value to have a, a risk manager, which means you know that they're. And I'm just. I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm not, just throwing that out there. I'm just saying that that happened. She didn't even do that. David, was yes, the last uh, human resource director, what, what, was she a director of the last position? Because I know uh, the one that was here before, she did many different things. I don't know what her title was. I know she was human resource. You, know, the line, but human you don't resource. know, then you, I mean, I, I don't know how you create a job without knowing what the previous person yeah. did. I mean, seriously, she was HR manager slash city clerk, and she was paid $70,000, and you're paying this one seventy two to do one job. And we're right back to where we were, you know, in terms of the city clerk position. It was advertised as a manager, so you only got manager material wanting to apply for it. You didn't get directors applying for it because they would take a step down, gave her a raise within a month, changed her title within a week. And then all of a sudden, anyone that would have had, which we know were out there, that had director level positions, they would have moved over here laterally because you were going to be offering 72000 you know, again, is her ability to do her job going to change based off of much of the amount of money that you pay her? Say it again, please. Is her ability to perform the functions of HR director going to change based on the amount of money that you pay her? Because she came in as as uh, as, as human res manager, human resources manager. That's what she came as. You know, if you had wanted a, a, a director and you changed your title within a week, it what you did was you kicked every other director position or person that would have wanted to apply for that position is what I'm getting at. So if she came here as a manager, what was her expectation that she was going to be a director within a week? That was your decision, right? That's correct. Right. So, and then you put us on the hook. I don't remember that it was a week though. I well, I got the minutes for it. You made her a director within seven days was of it? coming. Yeah. And then you okay. gave her the $12,000 within a month. Hmm. What are we on the hook for, Marie? Um, paying him the amount of money that he's paying her. You know, that, when he when he advertised, and that's exactly to right. To accept or deny that. Did we find right. out where that is, Ricky? We're not on the hook for anything. In so what do we, we already are. We're paying her right now. Okay. That's okay, what two things. Current salary is... No, but where is that in where the budget? Where are you finding that at? What page? It's, it's in the county... I mean, sh I'm sorry. City <laughs> Manager's Cost Center. Okay. What page is that on? It's towards City the manager. very beginning of details. Yeah, city manager. What's what's the, what's the line item number? What's the page? Two point two two or forty three on the details. Okay. Line item number is. Uh, Twelve hundred. It's uh, salaries and wages. Salaries and wages, right at the top. I still haven't found her. Okay, there. No. So, 66670, that's what she's getting now? No, that's no? the city clerk. What page oh, is that? Oh, wait a minute. I still can't find it. It's I not in there. No, it's not there. Existing staff, that would be the 103 is existing staff. So she's clumped into that 103,000. So it doesn't say specifically. He just said it's 72. Okay. He says her current pay is 72? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Has everybody got that? Hmm. I don't see. Uh, okay. I don't see it. So on page on page two of forty three. Yes. Two of forty three. Uh, second line down. There's one hundred and three thousand six hundred and sixty three for existing staff. Her seventy two is in that number. That's so she's making seventy two thousand dollars now. Seventy two thousand. Yes. Okay. Well, the base was one hundred and three. No. 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 no, no, no. no. That, no. That's a bunch of different clerk, employees. With the clerk. I'm saying. Correct. There's there's so other th people in that there. That comes out to one hundred thirty five. Well, that's because in here they've got a 3% raise. That's more than 3%, I think. Well, that's because the city clerk is added in there with 3%. He's saying 72. So right. 72 plus the 66 plus that add another 3% to the 72, then you should come up with 103. Is there any question about what I'm saying? It's more than 103. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot more. Looks like. Yeah, it's, I'm it's getting 135,000, so that's a lot more than 103. 63 and 72. 
and that's that way off tonight. How many people are in that group? In that uh, anybody see that? How did that happen? Uh, you know what? There might be secretarial in there as well. Yes. So we don't know what that rate is. Yeah, it just says existing staff. Right. right. So I don't know. That's so many people in there. There's All right. I mean, is there any question that it's different than seventy-two thousand? I mean, no. There's no question. All right. So it, it's seventy-two thousand is what she's making right now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How did that happen? I want to. I mean, yeah. she was hired at what? Sixty. Sixty thousand. Yes. Sixty thousand. And she got a twelve thousand dollar raise when? Within a month, six weeks. A month or six weeks, you raised yes. twelve thousand dollars. Yes. Now Why? we've we've hashed this out. Now, I believe I had the authority to do that. I recognize that she was vital to my organization, what I was trying to develop here for the city, to try to make things better, to hire the best people, to retain and recruit the best people. I believe that she was the person to do that, and I believe that she justified the salary that I gave her. Y'all can disagree with that. I understand that. Y'all been disagreeing with it since I did it. So I, I get that. Keep beating me up. It's okay. That's that's. Well, it comes it ain't okay. It's not okay with me because I'm getting to the point, David, I don't know if Avon Park can afford you. I'm serious as a heart attack. And you've been telling me that for a while, too. And, and that's the way I feel. At I a understand. zero millage, maybe not, Stanley. I'm I, sorry? I, I, at a zero millage, maybe not, Stanley. I, outside I of that, I would, I'd have to. At a zero right. millage, maybe not, Stanley. Uh -huh. Okay. That's you hear fine. that one? That's fine. Okay. But the that's millage's fine. not going to pay nobody's salary. From what the chart we saw up here the other day. You know, that it I absolutely pays say. people's salaries. It goes to the general fund. That's what millage does. Yeah, but it's such a small portion of it. Is what right now, that's what I was getting at. It's at almost zero. It needs to be it higher, to and be it would that. alleviate all this so that we could have a functioning city with the best people. That's the point. Well, I don't want to pay them no $72,000. Hey, if, if, if you're going to speak, you got to come up to the microphone. At the last meeting, made a memory suggestion to me, yes, and we voted it down twice. Is this the same subject? Yes. Yeah. That was, 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 that that was, Foy Hall, and his address is? Yes. Houston Foy Hall, 820 West Pleasant. We've spoken about this plenty of times, and the, Mr. Bernard had an excellent summary and fund-based impact and the very minor amount of impact that it was was actually represented and was somewhat minuscule but yet it got voted down and i was reminded twice like a smart remark at the last meeting no, that's why i mentioned no. it now not only was it voted down once voted down twice and it should be in yep. there for, for if you want to speak you just have to keep it in the microphone the and there was a stop gap of three percent, and there was a stop gap of three percent, and there was an excellent opportunity to change that. I just want to remind, like the smart remark made to me by someone, and it was voted down twice. By we the way, we're talking about that. I don't think Emmy made that comment, but yes, I, I, did. just to uh, be, yeah, they, did. if you're going to make the comment, it has to be no. in the microphone. Yes, you did. Well, and that's right. fine. You know, and that's you, fine. Boy, that's okay. All right, that's okay. me all you want, all right. but yes, you did. Okay. All right, boy. I believe right. you. I about your okay. from before. I mean, okay. All right, this is enough boy, of this please, conversation please right here. Your finger at the console. Okay. Moving forward, we've got a human resources director that's currently making seventy-two thousand dollars a year. We need to set a scale for that job, <laughs> if it's going to be a director position or not. That's what we have to do here tonight. So is there any motions to that effect or any further discussion on that effect? I, well, let me just say something. Um, okay. My thought on that is that it was advertised as a human resource manager's position. I think we should stick with that. That's just my thought, you know, and pay the salary that's equivalent to that position. Is that's there a salary thought. that you're proposing? I don't know what a human resource manager position gets. Was it was there a s range when it was advertised? Oh, I don't know. No, he said no. there was no range when it was advertised. Jerry, if 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 the council is voting down the fact that that is a director level position, do we then also set a range at that point or no? Well, 
you have purview over whether director positions are approved I you know the the question of the amount of pay that's a more difficult one and as long as it's within the budget um, at this point then I don't know you know what to say unless somebody else has more information but that's exactly why I said you need the job description to have a range because you can set that as part of your budget and then it can't be exceeded at that point and you eliminate this kind of you know right stuff that's what I'm asking is is if if it doesn't rise to a director level position as Brenda was was asking does that uh, I, then the take away our purview of setting that I don't think it makes any difference okay you know, okay I mean there's nothing in your your um, manual that I'm aware of or anything in your code that says directors you know have to make more than others right. you know and you can pay somebody who's not a director more right if they deserved it and not have a not have a department so whether it's called a director or not it's irrelevant I believe it is yeah okay so tonight we just need to decide what that pay scale is going to be what that pay range is going to be yeah if you have that position you know um, I mean that's a that's the issue okay I mean and a, historically you have that that position right human resources that but um, you know it's the difficult one I you know I like I said I can't just shoot from the hip I just simply tell you what the what the what the issues are the issues are he has to stay within the budget with regard to how much he pays and if you established a range he'd have to stay within that as well as part of that you know that budgeting process that we're doing right now right let um, me ask you a question Jerry if we change it not a director's position and a manager I think you just asked that question didn't you right, right. then we right. don't have to pay, do a pay range no it doesn't change anything at all but then he gets to pick to what he wants to pay that manager it would be better to that's pick a range now okay. that's, yeah. that's okay. between you and and the city manager Right. right but if you leave it as a manager then he still gets to pick and he still can pay her 72 but I have a question I'm afraid for, you, so. for you David if I, if I don't mind so if she wants to be a director leave her as a director I'd say that we just give her the same range that we gave the city clerk okay. under the requirements David it says a bachelor's degree required I assume she has that she has two master's degrees okay master's degree okay. preferred so she has that <laughs> driver's license three years related experience assume she has that and I assume she passed everything else. So she meets the requirements of what you put in here today. So. And, and Jim, just please point out here that the human resource director position is tailored to her. Okay. Okay, so this isn't a position that was that in the files. This is something that was created for her. So that's how you validate the pay. So if you came in as a manager, she wasn't this. Well, I'll make a motion that we change it to a manager from a uh, executive. You can't. Right. A manager yeah. gets what they want. I say leave it as executive. So leave it as executive and just give her the same pay rate that we gave the city clerk. Done we need deal. to set okay. the pay range. That's the only That's thing what we that need is. to do. What was it? Forty to sixty-three. That's what the other was. However, she's currently making seventy-two. So you think about the repercussions of that. If it goes down, is that person likely to stay? Do we want to try to retain she that came person? In at sixty. If you'll let me finish. Okay is that person going to stay or are they going to leave so there are ramifications for just simply saying we're taking money out of your pocket okay let me ask a question this job description that we have here today as the human resource um, director if you advertise this job with this job description what do you think your um, chances range. are yeah, with the salary range of same as the um, 40 to 63 I have it's, no idea. it's all speculative I mean it's, yeah, I'm just it's impossible just to answer well she came uh, here at 60 yeah I, I, I one thing alternative that has not been mentioned is I mean there's nothing that keeps you from setting the range lower and freezing the salary of the existing person I just throw that out there I'm not suggesting it I'm just really saying that you've said so far that you, you know you have to go with a higher range and put it into the you know so it fits this particular person you don't necessarily have to do that you can say this was a mistake we think the range should be X and um, but we're gonna freeze this existing employee where they are now and um, you know that's that's it and get obviously cost of living and things like that increases I, you know the ramifications once again are you know that that person will realize that they reached the ceiling and there's no place for them to go um, other than another uh, position um, it 
pay, being paid more at the city, and um, so they may leave at that point. Right. Then if we just advertise and get somebody else. That's the way I see it. That's entirely up to the council. That's the point. Yep. We make those Set decisions. Pay range. But, but that I wasn't suggesting that you that you make this person live at that lower range. Okay. Yes. I think he's got the purview to pay them that at this point. So let me but ask once you, you establish the range, you can't exceed it, but you should freeze that person at that level. Okay, so let's just say <coughs> that person that. is making the, the salary right now of 72 and we're working on the budget and we say that we're going to make the budget what the budget's going to be. Does that mean that between now and the budget, she continues at the 72 and then when budget season opens up, she's back to 60 or whatever? No. Or does she change right now because right, it was our like purview from the get-go? You're huh? grandfathering her in the position because now you're establishing uh, the the rent pay range in the budget for the future, but I'm saying you're grandfathering this employee into that pay that they're receiving, and then they'll just receive the cost of living. That's an option. No, no, no. I'm saying right now, if you were to change it right now, we're talking about budget, but somehow this really is part of getting to the budget. If we're approving these positions, and you change it to a lower amount, does that mean that that kicks in immediately? No. You one have October. to wait until the budget? What? It kicks in one October, right, when the budget starts. Because this is the budget. That's what she's asking. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you're paying her 72 right now, yeah. and the board decides that we're going to pay her $10, are we saying that we're going to pay her 72000 until October, and then come October 1st, that's she gets $10, or is no. she get her $10 now? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the, per the you know, it's difficult to say... And I'm not, I'm not taking a legal position on this at this point, yeah. but I'm simply saying it's difficult for you to say, um, he set the salary and we don't agree with it, therefore you know, we're, we're gonna say it's lower. You can set the range, but you didn't set that before she was hired. Ah. Right. Okay, okay, so grandfather her at that rate, even past October or even past next year, and then you know, Presumably, with you know, cost of living increases and things like that, or whatever oh. you know. Uh, so uh, we're just stuck with the seventy-three. But, but you can set for the future if she ever leaves, you can set the oh. new one there. So if he has to rehire somebody, then he can't. You know, if you feel feel like it's shenanigans, then they can't go beyond that range at that point. So if you like the sixty thousand, then go ahead and set it at that amount for the future. But they won't affect but this. They won't affect this employee. Now. I say grandfather this employee in. I'm not willing to do that. Okay. I don't think we should grandfather stuff like that. I'm not willing to pay the price for someone else's mistake. I don't see it as a mistake. So she's she qualified. She's automatically grandfathered in? No. Is that what you're saying? No, he could say you can make it grandfathered oh. in. Oh. Yeah. You can make it. You just David, have the ramifications of it. So, mm -hmm. But my other no. It shows the total line items no. 170000 and the two positions between the clerk and the human resources 135. Do you know where the other 35000 is being spent? Could you answer? Would you would you state that again for Ricky okay. to tell you where that's coming from? All right, uh, on the regular salary wages, it shows 103,000 base, 20, and then it actually shows the total 170,333. If you take the two salaries between the city clerk and the human resources, that adds up to 135. So, mm -hmm. can you tell me what? Did you factor in the benefits and everything with that? I'm just going by the line item. They're, I'm sure the benefits are down below. The benefits are down at the bottom. Okay, yeah. you so that's why the, you said there may be other city staff included. In the city manager's office, you have the city manager whose um, salary comes out of the executive salaries account. And then you have the uh, personnel director. You have the uh, executive assistant, um, and you also have the part-time employee. Uh, is that they come Susie out. Those Gentry? three. Yes. So is she making thirty-five thousand or less? I think, his I think, I think she's right. forty-three. What? They're not. I think. I can get none of them to add up. <laughs> I went through all 43 pages. Yeah, well, there's existing staff down here. And I think that that one is the part-timer. You've got, you've got the three positions. Wait a minute. All right, what, what three you positions? Got, you've got the city clerk. Yep. You've got the personnel director. 
you've got uh, the executive assistant, that's Susie, and you've got the part-time person. So all those salaries add up to 170000 for your proposed budget? No. Okay. I think that the uh, that one that you're talking about is further down as a existing staff or something. Uh, that just can't be so four that people. Was, that's removed at 38 Yeah, but that just can't be four people. Just where, where are we going with this, Jim? What, what's the uh, what's the end to that? Well, I I put it to you like this. I think it was very difficult to discuss the city clerk's position and salary with her being here. Yep. And um, but I think that, um, in my opinion, I think we solved the issue. <clears throat> so I think the same the situation. If the human resource person was here. It'd be another difficult situation. To be quite frankly, I'm not happy with the $12,000 increase after a short period of time. I don't think that is acceptable. But that being said, I think it's kind of unfair to take somebody's salary away, uh, that $12,000, as our decision. I, I, I think the difference is this, is that where I'm concerned is I represent the citizens and taxpayers of Avon Park. And I believe that you represent the position of managing the city and you have a right to hire the people that you want to assist you in managing. But we have decision making, trying to balance the budget because what we think is fair, especially compared to previous situations. But like I said, the bottom line in this case is I, I, I'm not, I don't feel good about taking away somebody's money that will probably cost that position and we'll have to start from scratch again and uh, that's just how I feel. It's, just, it's, just, it's too difficult. It's something that too bad we didn't have the advertised salary things in here to go. Then when it all would have made perfect sense. We would I mean, to be quite frank with you, David, I really was excited about the fact you accept the job at, at probably the lowest pay was it a salary of 90000 and a city uh, manager a long time. I actually thought that that was going to be the direction you were going to take, <coughs> excuse me, with the rest of the staff, is to try to keep the staff at a lower range so that we can hire more people outside where I think that's where we really need them, is outside to clean up the city. But with that being said, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to vote to take money away from somebody that's already got it. I just don't think that's right. Was there a motion in there anywhere? I like Jerry's idea about the, the freezing existing salary for the human resource person at 72000 That's what she's getting paid. But to change the range for future from, we'll, we'll just go with forty to sixty-three for now. Is that a sufficient motion? Okay, we have a motion. I'm sorry, I didn't understand it. All right, I'll say it again. I make a motion that in the future we make the human resource director position the range of forty to sixty-three thousand. At the same time, uh, grandfather and the existing human resource person at her salary of seventy-two thousand. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion. Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilwoman Gray. No. Council members Spurlock. No. Council Member Sutherland? No. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion fails. Okay, that three. motion failed. Is there another motion that would please the board? I move that we change her salary to $60,000 a year. Ex or, or uh, let, me, let me put it like You have right to give here. a range. It, it has to be a range. We have to so. get a range uh, that we have the same range that we do with the city clerk. That's 40 uh, to 63,000. 63, that's 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 the motion I make. And, without and remain at the director's position. Right. Yes. Without freezing her current pay. I'm sorry. Without freezing the current pay of the employee that currently Ch holds Ch that position. Changing the pay uh, to that range whenever the budget takes effect in October to give her warning. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Jerry, is there any comment? No, I think I've already made comments. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. <coughs> Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. 
Councilman Spurlock? Yes. Councilwoman Sutherland? No. Deputy Mayor Bernard? No. Mayor Anderson? No. Motion fails. All right. Is there another motion that will please the majority of the board? What was your conflict on that, Maria? Um, that we're still continuing to pay that same salary for two or three more months. <coughs> and if we're going to make the change now, then it ought to be taken into effect immediately. We can't do two that. or three more months. No, two, two, two weeks. Two weeks. The board cannot do that. You know that. Okay. 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 Okay, can I rephrase my motion to make it effective immediately? We can't do he that. You just said we can't. We can't. Okay. Jerry, can, do we have that power year. to do that or not? Yeah. As I mentioned, I don't want to <laughs> what? commit I mean, this, you this to is a, a true legal I don't want to commit you to a legal position that I may have to defend, you know, at, you know, or not later on. And I, you understand where this could end up, right? Yeah. You're going to take somebody's pay and say, that's oh, 72000 Yeah, issue. forget about that. Yeah. Uh, we're going to give you $10,000 less. Okay. Yeah. So, assuming that it's going to end up in court, you want me to really say what I think and, and, uh, no. and, and, and state, you know, everything that I believe one way or the other? Yeah. Well, I think it's disgusting that a board member wouldn't even <laughs> give the woman two weeks. You know? It's pretty low, isn't it? Maybe I'm the only one that thinks that. But I, I think it's disgusting. So is there another motion that will please the board? Well, the one thing, if we kept it at the original range that he said of 40 to 63, then she at least would get a, a $3,000 raise over the initial hiring of 60000 Yeah, 000. that's so true. That's, that's not what I'm hearing y'all say. I, I don't think y'all are going to be happy until I put her right back where she started. That's that's what I'm hearing. Well, he, no, no, we'd go back to 63, not 60. That's what he said. That was the motion. All right. I'll yeah. second it. So she would get a, a raise from initial hiring, is what he said. I think all of it is extremely childish, personally. I think it's all disgusting. I agree. Okay. I think everybody needs to, you know, grow up and get on with it. Yeah. So. Your, your motion was? I heard a second. Well, I didn't hear it. I, I I didn't you didn't make a motion? <laughs> no, I didn't make a motion. Oh, okay. I was well, just you said I'm on way. What, what was discussed, you know, that, it, that if that motion would have passed, then she would have got at least a three thousand dollar raise over what she was hired on, from sixty thousand to sixty three, if we gave her the, that maximum range level. But so instead of taking her from seventy two to sixty, instead of losing twelve thousand, she lose nine thousand. But even then, I just think that that's I, I don't agree with. Uh, you know, city manager did his job to the best of ability. He did. We find out later we don't like it we don't agree with it we all have reasons good reasons bad reasons and uh, you know all, all this is really um, has nothing to do with her taking the job and getting the job and working the job you know you can put somebody to blame but you can't blame the person who has the job making 72,000 so why should she sacrifice uh, I mean I just uh, if I was in that position and to somebody told me that, oh, by the way, you know, a few months later we're taking the $12,000 raise back or whatever it is, I probably would leave. And then we'd be starting from scratch. It may save us money. We'd have to get a new person. we start all over again. And I, I think for the sake of the city, I, I just, you know, I don't, I think we have enough bad presses from other things. We do not need to continue something like this. And I, I wouldn't say it was childish or disgusting. I just think it's a different opinion that we have to look what's in the best interest for the city overall and to argue over 12,000 where we can freeze it in the future. I just... Uh, Jim? Uh, yes, ma'am. May, may I say something? Absolutely. Sure. Please do. In my opinion, I'm not looking at the person. I don't even know the lady who owns the job, to okay. be honest with you. I'm looking at the position, what it, what it entails, and what the city can, I think, can afford to pay. I'm looking out for the... Sorry. Yeah, I agree. So let me ask you this question then. If you look at it from this position, let's say that person was a friend of yours. Uh, my a friend has nothing to do with it. So, so if she was a friend of yours and she had I, I don't do friendship when it comes down to the J-O-B. So, so <laughs> you wouldn't mind deducting the $12,000? I, I, I said I don't, I don't put friendship in 
when it comes down to the job. Is I have a job to do, yep. and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Okay. Is there a motion? Anyone? So we can move past this? So it seems like I mean, I'm the only one that can make a decision at this point in terms of a motion. Let, let, let me, let me that would be happy? I mean, yeah. Just reiterate what I said then. earlier. You know, um, on, the, on the one hand, you know, if he exceeded the budget when he gave the salary or these salaries uh, in general, um, then you, you have something to say about that. Um, can't, you have something definitely to say about whether a new department is formed or not. Um, when you start to get into the issue of how much he's paying somebody, a particular person, you're starting to get in a dangerous area, charter-wise. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing that. We're giving a range, so. Well, I know, but. Um, Okay. Uh, what but was the, you, what was you, the last you, motion? You had a range that was established before. If it's the last motion was to pay her the same as the city clerk. <coughs> okay. So, and leave it as a director's position. Right. But it can't. That motion can't be made again because we already made that motion and it didn't oh, pass. You can right? change it by a dollar. I mean, hmm? you can change it by a dollar. All right. Well, then I'll change it to forty thousand. What was it? it? To the same as the city clerk, up to <laughs> sixty-three thousand and one dollar. So that was from forty to sixty-three. Wasn't that what the city clerk had? Was it the sixty three thousand? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. That affected with a new budget. Okay. okay. And does that include uh, a freeze on her current? Pay? No, no, it doesn't. Okay. For short time. That All right. So that's the motion. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Actually, there was a part of discussion. I just want to make a very valid point here. Out. And you know, I know you don't like me speaking. And it no, I, I have no problem with you speaking. Okay. The things that you say sometimes I don't think are the best thing for the city, and I, well, I absolutely object know. to a lot of them, but I have no problem with you speaking, okay. nor have I ever tried to get you to not speak. So. <laughs> exactly. It's called misogyny. Okay, move That's forward. not what um, I said at all. $12,000, hey. just FYI, is about 40% of what the average resident makes in this town. And I think it's an insult to the community that when a raise is given of that magnitude without consideration of what the people in our community earn and pay, in the end, they're the ones paying this bill, not us, and we represent them. And I hope that in the future, any other job that's provided, that be taken into consideration. Thank you. The average person does not have two master's degrees. The average person is not a human resources director. The average person does not have that experience to hold that position. So they're two very different things, just the same as a Average person does not make the same as a doctor because they did not go through the schooling. They did not have the training. They did not have the skills to do that. So okay. I would just like to point that out. Also, I do not. I take very much offense to you calling me a misogynist. because yeah, uh, you tend to do it to me all the time. I don't, actually. I have never treated you any different than anyone else. But nevertheless, That's we have a motion please. and we have a second. Right. Is there any further discussion? Uh, just let me say that if um, you lower somebody's pay, it could be considered to be you know, a uh, tacit uh, firing or constructive termination. Could be fear what? Constructive termination. Constructive what? Trying termination. to run them off. It means you're firing them Try because you're, off. you're pulling. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a legally, legally foolish decision is what I'm he's not, trying no, to no, say. No, that's not what I'm no. saying. I'm just simply saying that that's one of the considerations okay. that, that you all have to consider. Are you saying well. it could be a legal issue after the fact? I think it it could be, but okay. I'm not saying that it absolutely is. Okay. I wish Brian Koji was here to, to advise on this particular situation. I spoke to Mr. Koji, and he said that it's our prerogative because it's an at-will employee and because we get to set the rates and we weren't allowed to give the rates, that we can set them as we see fit. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? No. Mayor Anderson? No. Motion passes three to two. All right. Is there any further discussion on the organizational chart or any of the job descriptions? Nope. No. Do we have to approve the organizational chart as it is on this paper? Mm. No, you don't need to approve that. Okay. All right. So we're done um. with that. Yeah, I have my copy back now. Please. Yes. So, <laughs> the last time we uh, we asked the administration to take out the 11 items, which to our knowledge has been done. 
So is there anything else um, that we need to take out? Now last time the fire assessment was not, the increase in the fire assessment was not approved. Actually, Next one what you voted on was to have no fire assessment. Right. None. Not the raise. None. Right. So as it stands right now. There is no fire assessment. We have no okay. fire assessment, which is roughly a 500 and some odd thousand dollar impact to the proposed budget, right? Yes. Okay. So you either have to take out 500 and something thousand dollars in the current general fund of the budget, or you have to instate a fire assessment. Okay, okay. let me ask you. Oh, I'm sorry. And you can do a mixture of the two. Yeah. It's Go ahead. any combination. First. Okay. The um, 11 positions that we just talked about, 11, um, whatever Item. they were. Item. If those taken out that still need the 500 some odd thousand dollars, you understand what I'm asking? If we cut the budget by these 11 positions. Yes, it's still short. It's still short. Yes, because we did not approve a fire assessment at all. I understand that. Okay. My, my recommendation would be to bring that back up. There is a, a motion that I believe Ricky has that he talked to uh, Chris Rowe um, about in order to do that. I think that was an oversight on the council's part. I don't think y'all intended to do away with the assessment entirely. I think y'all were. No, my thought was that to let it remain the same. That's what I, but I. I, I, I think that's yeah. what y'all intended to I do. I think Correct. we ha we have the um, the email here that tells them what to do. It's right at the top. What email? Um, looks like this. They, I don't think everybody. Has I don't that. have a copy. We don't of that. have that one. No, that, just the attorney has that. Okay, I'll just read it to you. So the resolution still needs to be adopted, reflecting the rates approved by the council at the meeting tonight. If the resolution is uh, as written, says one hundred and forty dollars per dwelling unit but the council decides tonight to adopt last year's rates, the motion would be something to the effect of hereby, uh, I hereby move to adopt resolution number X, amended to reflect readoption of last year's rate schedule. Then after the, the meeting, we'd have revised the resolution to reflect the rates they approved tonight before the, the resolution is signed. So what he's saying is, if you wanna keep it the same as what it was tonight, then all you, um, it, 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 it doesn't say that in the existing resolution, is that correct? It doesn't um, so we're just say the previous rates in the existing okay, resolution. Okay, so what we need to do then is we need to change that by verbally and then the, the, um, they'll re redraft it according to what you pass, okay? So you would say, if you wanted to do so, if you wanted to make it what it was, you would, you would say, I hereby move to adopt the resolution number 19-14. 19-14, amended to reflect readoption of last year's rate schedule. So if somebody here wants to make that motion, you could say so moved. So moved. I second it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. So yeah. we're oh, Yeah, yeah, we have, have a discussion. Yeah, we're going to go over it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, let me just ask a question. With the rates reflected as i mean same as last year what would the sh would there still be a, a shortfall in the budget if we add that money in there and if so how much <laughs> it would be the difference between um the you rate what was generated short. last year which was um roughly four hundred and thirteen thousand dollars and what was projected to come in with the increase, which is uh, that was projected at 500, and I believe it's 581,000. 571, 511 is what's in the resolution. Yeah. Okay. That was the numbers that they gave us, yes. Okay. Uh, can, can, can I say something here? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of. It's can, can everybody turn to page? 13 of 43 of the detail portion of the budget 14 of 43 yep 13 of 43 you just look 14? at the proposed increment of 19 and in, in year 20 okay when you got that looked at well turn, where you at where you at on okay. that page the bottom part of it the fire department I, I want you to look over in the column 
uh, to the right where it says proposed increments for FY19 and 20. This is in code enforcement? Look at no. No, okay, down to I the bottom it says fire department. Fire department. I'm, I'm fixing to bring this all into picture. Just okay. go ahead. L just look at that for a second. Now turn to page 26 of 43. And look at everything in 19 and 20 again. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now turn to page uh, 35 of 43. Do that again. Oh my God. And go to page 36 of 43. Oh, I ain't got the middle finger standing. <laughs> and go down to the bottom. And look at the base on all that. And go to 36 of four. Well, I was at 36. Okay. Now, my, my question is I guess 37 is where I want you to go on the last page. Go to 37 and look at the base. Okay. You're looking at the, the Monday budget, aren't you? Not tonight's. I'm looking at the one that I got the last time. Monday. Okay, Monday. Okay. Yeah. That's I'm what looking at the one I got the last time. Tonight's supposed to be the same so, one. So, we're trying to balance a budget in everything I just gave you. Do you know? Do you see anything about those that are, are relative? You have to help me out, Stanley. Every one of them is a rounded off number. Every one of them is okay. a rounded off number. So how in the world have we put any time <laughs> in this budget other than to say we just going to do this for five thousand, this for nine thousand, this for eleven thousand? When if you look at the budget before. It went down into dollars on things like that. So I, I don't really know how much time and study has been put into this budget. Um, I theorize not as much as the one beforehand but because of that reason. And I mean, that's kind of scary to me. Where are we really with our money? I don't know. The budgeted and the actuals are it's going, it's typically going always vary. There's always it's a difference. It's really there. vary because. I mean, if you added those numbers up. Right. Yeah, I know, but you got to think in past years we've had budgets that were supposedly balanced, but yet at the end of the year you wind up with a million dollars. Are you listening to me or are you just sighing? Did you hear what I said? I'm through. I'm in, through. I, just I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I am. In previous years we've had budgets that were, we've had budgets that were balanced. Uh huh. Okay. And then wind up with maybe 500, maybe a million, maybe a million five difference at the end of that year. So. Do you see how they vary? How it changes? I see how I, I see how they vary. And it's I impossible to here. forecast it to a dollar like you're wanting. This is going to really vary, buddy. I can tell you. It's I guarantee it won't be any different than past year. It's really it's really been padded good. I can tell you that. I have a question to ask. <laughs> Does the entire council feel that I did not spend enough time on this budget? No. Because no. if so, you got my resignation right now. <laughs> I'm just giving you numbers, and that's the way it is. I don't well, know who you did. just accuse me of not spending time on this budget. Words that just came out of your mouth. Th that's the way I see the numbers. Okay. I'm not saying that you did or didn't. The rest I just of the see the feel that way. Ricky, I don't feel you got an way, email from me yesterday. That that's not how I feel. No. Absolutely. I don't feel that way, Ricky. No. I can walk uh, out that door right now. No. Please don't. Nobody's asking you to do that. No. Uh, uh, let me Please uh, reference my email from yesterday. I, I understand what, you, what the process here is. If you, if you spent $16,227 last year and you want to increase it for whatever reason, if you just go to $20,000, you round it off a number. It doesn't mean you're going to spend $20,000. It just means you're going to have $20,000 in the budget. And so that you're either going to spend $20,000 or less. <laughs> Or if you go over, then there have to be some exception to come somewhere else. You can't expect somebody to put a budget in there and round it off to the exact dollar of expectation because that's not going to make any sense. I mean, it's like it's like saying, well, we want to add, you know, two more tennis courts. Well, are they going to cost exactly twenty-two thousand dollars each, or are they going to cost twenty-one thousand four and twenty dollars and seventy-two cents? You have to make a round-off figure to make sense. It doesn't mean you have to spend that amount, but the actuals are the ones that makes you brought down to the exact amount that was spent to the penny, or at least to the dollar. And that makes perfect sense, but you can't turn around and change the budget for the future, whether you're raising it or lower it, without 
trying to make it an even number because it's, it's too difficult to bring it down to dollars and cents. I I'm mean, saying those numbers were brought to Ricky. I didn't say that Ricky did it. I, I'm not okay. insinuating that ever to begin with, but I'm, I'm saying okay. that they were brought in wrong is what I'm saying. Right. Well, we're, we have a motion on the floor in a second. And well, uh, let, me, let me apologize for losing my temper. Okay. I have better control of that right now. But I can guarantee you <coughs> that the department heads have brought me that information it was based on actual quotes that they got on different items. So it was not something that was plucked out of thin air. Those were based on actual quotes that they went out and got on those pieces of equipment as well as those items that are uh, other items that are contained in there. They were not amounts that were pulled out of thin air. To most part, I can agree with you on that. But I now, whenever we talked about the tractor and the bat wing and things of that nature, they didn't even know what kind of tractor or anything else about it, Ricky. So, but that's not your fault. That's not your fault at all. I can tell you on the tractor that they did because they knew the horsepower rating on it. They knew the other information on it. Uh, it was, you know, came off of state contract pricing which is lower than what the individual can purchase items for. So yes, they did do their research yeah, and get that information. For $60,000. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the table. I like what that. was the motion again now? now the motion was to go back to the uh, fire assessment rates that oh, yeah, were imposed yeah, yeah, last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, okay. That was right. motioned and seconded. Right, Further before, questions? before we vote, I want to make a comment. And I'll tell you flat out right now, I am never going to agree to cutting the two firefighters from our fire department. And I, it doesn't matter to me whether you want to raise the fire assessment, keep it the same or whatever. I will not vote for this budget if we don't put those two firefighter positions back in there. When I ran three years ago, I talked to people in all parts of this city and they told me two main things. And the first main thing is they asked me to make sure that we keep and fully staff our fire fire department. I think we have a department that is uh, highly qualified, exceptional experience. We've talked before in the past about how I talked about how we're getting seniority up there. Sooner or later, we're gonna have to replace these people and we can't just turn around and expect somebody, a couple people we already lost this year, I believe, with 20, 30 years service and lost and not turn around and bring those people up. Eventually, we're gonna leave lose several at a time because they'll turn around and come up. So I will not approve this budget. I'll tell you all right now, if we don't put those two firefighter positions back, it doesn't matter to me whether you raise the fire assessment, keep it the same or not. I, I agree with you. I um, This has been my contention all along as well. Um, the reason why I didn't approve the fire assessment the last time was because a lot of the money that was intended didn't go there. I would like to keep some level of fire assessment increase as long as it's not used as a candy store for every other department. So, you know, if, if we can find that happy number of where the two positions fit in there and then increase it by that amount, I'm good. And also the additional races that we know that are coming but haven't been negotiated yet. I wish we knew what that number was and that we can kind of base around that. I think that would have been really helpful to have tonight. You've got it. That's going to be into perpetuity, obviously. So if that's going to be the case, the next year we're our, our fire assessment will have to be commensurate with this year's increase. So I, I don't want to take from the, the general fund to pay it. I would rather do it with the fire assessment. It was my contention all along. It was either the fire assessment or a tax. I'm sticking with the fire assessment. It showed, so, the, the, showed the two positions as 67,681. So if you want to figure out uh, the Cutting the fire, fires inspectors with 149,000. I don't know what the fire inspector was. So the difference in the fire assessment <coughs> from what it's being proposed here on this tonight versus what it was in the resolution is roughly $158,000. You're trying to lower it by $158,000. The uh, those two positions added together is 134. But then you also have pension and all that other stuff to go along with it, and all right. your equipment and all the other stuff. That so it makes that sense to keep what was proposed in the original resolution. What was the amount proposed in the original resolution? What was the total bolt, the, the big amount? Right there, 571,000. Right, so of that 571, what of that is actually going to the fire department? All of it. 
All 571,000 is going 100% yeah. to the, the only fire place department. It can go. The only place it should go. Okay, but then how much no. from the general fund is being taken out of the fire department? See, that, that's what would happen. Taking out of the fire department? No. Zero. Out of the general well, fund. No, We're taking a million from the general fund and putting it to the fire department. Well, I know that. But, but if what they I'm got rid of the two fire positions and you still raise the fire assessment, you'd get the money in from the fire assessment, but then they would take the money back to general fund. Exactly. The general fund would give the fire department less money so they didn't have to pay for those two positions if you take them out. You understand that? I get uh, it. Okay, so if we're gonna raise the assessment to pay for those two positions, then I think that, and we vote to keep those two firefighter positions, then I don't think the city has staff has anything to do but to keep the fire assessment money where it goes and to keep the general fund in there to pay the fire department what's in the budget now. Jerry, do you have something you're about to say? No, I, I think it's been said. Jim, are you saying, and I don't know if this is where you're going with this, is that all the money that's going to the fire department right now, From we're not talking about the budget, everything that's going there right now is a set amount. We're adding to that the fire assessment. If we do that, yes. Right, so we're not taking any general fund money out. Away from it, yes. Correct, so what you're doing is you're actually going to be increasing the fire budget because right. you have two more people in there. You're not taking any general fund money exactly. out. Exactly, so whatever that fire assessment is to equal those two positions or round it up is fine with me. Well, in the last budget on Monday, they had the removal of those two positions, but they were in on the workshop budget, so I don't know how the numbers were tweaked or how it ended up, but well, right Ricky, I don't know, can you do like a, you know, what's the bottom line in there? Well, the bottom line is this. Um, if you add those positions back in, the only option you have to balance your budget based on the current revenues that you will have available to you for next year, you're going to have to utilize some of your fund balance to be able to balance your budget. But don't we have a 1.3 million fund ba balance now? You've got yes. You've got 1. more. 1.3 million. You got more than that actually in your fund balance. Um, you're only planning on utilizing a very small portion of that. So, but that's your only option. Let me wait, let me ask you a question. Let me make sure I got a clear idea what you when you say fund balance. Fund balance is that this fiscal year, 1819, we say we're going to spend X in number of dollars, but we didn't spend all of that. Mm -hmm. So the remaining of that is the fund balance. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Okay. So now if we got 1.3 million dollars. You got, you have more than that because okay. you have what it has accumulated over the last several years as well that are unspent funds. And if you remember from your audit, they showed you what that amount was in oh, the I audit I presentation. Audit. I brought my audit. Where are you going with that, Brenda? Is I there, is there but, uh, but my thought is that if we have that much money left over from this m fiscal year, right. why do we have to increase anything? Why can't we just use that money? Well, that's a one-time thing. That's yeah, I understand we only was budgeting it for one year. It right. has to be reappropriated. In order for you to spend the money, you have to appropriate the funds. They don't just automatically roll over. You have to appropriate them in the budget to be used. So can we appropriate some of that funds into the fire department? You can appropriate it to the general fund and then and move it, it to would the then fire go to the, the fire to fund the That's fire department. Yeah, really why, right there. why can't we do that? You can. Yeah. We can. Sure. Let me also remind everybody that uh, raising the fire assessment is something to where every homeowner and every business would have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And for me to, everybody gets, has equal access to our fire department on emergency levels. And I'm sure that they make thousands and thousands of calls every year. And uh, so some people don't pay any property, property taxes whatsoever. We all know that. And I understand the reasons for that. But I think for us to have a fully staffed fire department that is, serves everybody equally, then I think everybody should pay an equal share. And if it means, in my opinion, if it means to raise the fire assessment, I don't care if it's two, three, four percent, whatever you, somebody comes up with, to pay for those two firefighters to have a fully staffed fire department, which makes us 100% safe and secure, then that's what I'll vote for. Okay, let me ask another question. 
on um, when we talked at the last um, budget meeting uh, on page 13 that's 43 I have a note down here it was a sixty thousand dollars pay increase is that the sixty thousand dollars included in the budget here what page you say? A 13, 13 point, of 40. a 13 of 43. Okay, word line item, please. Okay, 13 of 43 in the detail line. Old budget. The whole, the, oh, the, the one that we had Monday. Monday budget. Yes, okay. Monday budget. Where at on the page? I just put a note down here. I think um, Chief <coughs> said that see, there was I 60. See if <laughs> can I understand your question here? You're asking if we've kind of proposed a 60 to 65,000 um, raise for yeah. firefighters. You're asking, is that currently in the budget that you yes. have in front of you? There is. Are you talking about the uh, negotiations with the union? Mm -hmm. Yes. The ones I don't that know what I'm talking about. Kind of I just started, know what he said. It's the union yeah. negotiations. Uh, okay. If it's the negotiations with the union, mm -hmm. you have seventy-five thousand dollars that is in reserve for contingencies for that. Mm -hmm. So whatever comes out of that negotiation you would have that those funds to be able to uh, appropriate from your um, reserve for contingencies account to salaries and benefits in the fire department so th th that is not included in on this budget that was my question it's not included in the fire department budget but it is included gotcha. in the budget okay let me also remind everybody about this extra found money that this year we have that we also were more than what two million dollars uh, underestimated from the budget to pay for their uh, water and sewer extension that money's going to have to come from someplace if we don't get all the grants applied for so but we were assured that it, that's probably going to come through <laughs> i don't think we're going to get probably. that two two plus million to pay for that I think we're going to be short something. I'm, I'm okay. being more optimistic about it. I'm okay. I'm well, <laughs> I like being optimistic, but I also like having reserves to pay for everything else. So, in either case, we have a motion and a second. Uh, the motion, like I say, was to go back to the rates from last year. That would not be the increased rate. So, is there any further discussion on that? Can, can I say something? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Can you not? I mean, I know you have a motion now, but is it an option to do something higher, like? The thirty-nine percent. Yes, it is. down forty. If this motion okay. fails, we'll have the option to yes. go back with something else. Okay. And and I think also the uh, also in the budget is for other materials that the fire department has requested, and, and I believe the fire chief said he would work uh, one hundred percent hard to try to get that money uh, through grants instead of having it in the budget through all the different improvements or radios and hoses or something like that. Is that correct, Andy? Uh, yep, I too have never written a grant in my life, but I've started learning the past couple days. Okay, <laughs> and we got, we got a city clerk that'd be more than happy to help you out. <laughs> we'll learn together. That's it, so so we can cut, some, we can maybe not need some money in the budget for other equipment, but we definitely need the firefighters, so. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Spurlock? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? I want to be clear. We're going back to the original amount. This motion is for yeah. the original right. amount and of last year. And we can still year. change it with oh. another motion. Yeah. Well, go on, go on. if you want to change it, you would want to fail this one and then yes. make another motion. Right. So yep. I'm going to vote no. Deputy Mayor Bernard? No. Mayor Anderson? No. Motion fails. Is there another motion? We need to know what that percent is, and that's what we're working on. I would right suggest now. going with what's in the resolution. It's only different from if it's over, it ain't going to be over by much. It's right out there, and it's already prepared before us. I just want to make sure that it covers all the essential needs that the fire department has in this new budget, along with the two jobs, but we along with the future um, expenses that they're going to have with the negotiated potential negotiations of, of raises that are comparable to the rest of the county. That okay. would actually be three jobs if we include the fire inspector in that. Cause well, that right now he is in there as a consultant. Well, it's, he's in there as a consultant already. You're, you're paying a third party contractor to do fire inspections right now, roughly $42,000. Okay, so I'm sort of proposing to have one of our current people move into that inspector position at a little higher rate, about 46 or 48, 
but you would also be paying him benefits. But would that individual also do firefighting, or yes. is it just going to be would strictly needed, fire? Yes, yes. Huh? he would. He would be um, inspector. He would be in charge of public education, uh, risk type stuff. To, you know, to he's eight to five. Correct, but he could fight fires. He would be a firefighter. Okay, he but he's not a firefighter. So yes. it, right now yeah. we don't gain anything by having a consulting Correct. dude. So you would be putting someone else in, right? So we, what what's the pension long term obligation on that? Well, he is a he's a high risk firefighter. He, right. We have somebody that's interested who has been there for about fifteen years. So I'd rather pay city. someone from here yeah. than pay a consultant. I would as well. I would too. My only my only question on this the. Right now, in this resolution, it's at $112,000 per dwelling unit. How does this differ from what we sent the trim notice out? Because the trim notice has already been sent. What did we send that at? You, you sent the notices out to the people that would be subject to the assessment for the first time mm -hmm. right. at $140, yep. $140 for okay. each residential unit. Right. And um, the other rates are included in the resolution there uh, as well um, that were associated with that. And I believe that you said at the last meeting that tomorrow will be the last day that we'd be able to change the fire assessment. So tonight would be our last chance to that's, do it. That's correct because the, the assessment has to be approved. Your role must be certified and it has to be delivered to the tax collector by September the 15th. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday the 13th. Okay. Which makes Sunday September the 15th. So You're very actually good at that. <laughs> all of this has to be delivered tomorrow. Okay. So Ricky, how much do we have to raise it to cover the positions that we just talked about? What? The fire inspector and the two additional firefighters and all of their pension obligations. At least around 150,000, right? I It'd probably be more than that. I actually have that number here somewhere. Okay. Can you give me just a moment. If I understood you correctly, Maria, that's what you were asking. Yes, I don't want. Yeah, eliminate the candy store concept. No. Thank you. As long as the general fund doesn't take out sure. and right. this stays in there. Yeah, what's your line? So 154,300 is what you would be adding back in. So right now the rates that we have are generating an additional uh, 158,000. So pretty close. Do you think Correct. that that so this well we have 112 per dwelling unit, uh, 0.06 per square foot on commercial, 0.010 for industrial, and 0.026 for government. You, that would cover it. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, there's your answer. So what was the percentage? Uh, well, it's just what is proposed in Resolution 19-14. I believe the percentage was a, 40 a recalling back 40% yes. increase yes. in the assessment. Yeah, that's what it was. Yep. Okay. I'm confused. I thought that the 40% was going to raise $500,000. Not all on its own. It raises it to five hundred and seventy. It would raise, it would raise your total to be collected from the assessment to the five hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars. You already were collecting. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying just the global yeah. amount collected. I thought that was going to be in addition to what currently is there. No. So okay. So now that is originally the thirty percent of what the assessment pays right now is about five hundred thousand. No, it currently pays 413000 okay. Last year, that's what it paid. And then adding in this 154000 is going to be? Make it 571 511 if you go with the figures that are okay. in the resolution. And so in this budget, the two firefighters are in here right now or not? Were they taken out? They were taken out, right? Um, they were taken out on Monday. They, they are in the budget that you had on Monday. Mm -hmm. What you did was direct us um, to take those out, and by taking those out, that brought the total budget down. So if Never you implement this uh, assessment and then add these positions back in, you're back to the same point you were at on Monday. 
which would be the same as this budget on that one item. Correct. Just that one item. Doesn't mean we can't cut other items. Yeah. I just want to guarantee that this that the money that's going to the fire department right now out of the general fund will not change and that this assessment will also go to the fire department. How, how do we guarantee it or we just take the city manager? I mean that that really to me is the whole premise of passing the fire assessment. How, how could it not? Because you've said count, countless times that it all goes into the general fund. Well, you fire you must the spend fire assessment doesn't. you must spend at least what you have collected on the fire assessment mm -hmm. on for fire department purposes. And uh, since another okay. million dollars is coming out of general fund to so supplement by the fire it already is. Yeah. yeah so right. you yeah. I just don't want that to You're go down because the, the assessment's assessment. going up. I think what you're saying is that we put more money in to the fire. fire uh, budget from the fire assessment that we want to make sure that you're not going to take that same amount general fund back no correct that's what you want right yes okay so okay. is there any way we can guarantee that or well, well they're going to say staff, they're going to do it staff has to carry out the direction of the council okay so uh, if we don't do that, that the then motion? we are answerable to the council you make that part yeah. of the motion then uh, it's actually the motion would just be to approve the resolution if that's what you're going to do uh, with adding the two positions Okay. Back in the two well, firefighter positions. That's a, that's a change to the budget, is it not? I mean, it is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just so the, the we'll just have to make sure that we like the amount of the resolution. Then all you need to do is pass the resolution. Okay. In which you case, can pass the resolution, resolution, and then um, at the final budget hearing, you can state at that time you want to add those positions in. Right. Um, they get added in, and uh, the budget is a, uh, adjusted accordingly. Well, they're in this budget here now, so they would just be there at the next Correct. reading. Okay. Right. Let, me, let me just uh, read the, the uh, resolution. The resolution of Avon Park, <coughs> Florida, relating to the provision of fire rescue services, facilities, and programs in the city, establishing the rate of assessment for the fiscal year commencing October 1, 2019, imposing fire rescue assessments against the assessed property located within the city, approving the assessment rule and directing delivery thereof to the tax collector, providing for severability and providing an effective date. Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. <laughs> You'll have a, <laughs> to mo pass a motion. Resolution 1914, right? Yep. If, I, if I'm um, allowed, I'll second. I don't have a second. language in that thing that <coughs> and stuff. Um, next am I allowed to second yeah. that? I second it. I mean, do you have to have any financial information in that motion? We don't have to spell out the exact rate. <coughs> no, because it's already in the resolution. Okay. Yeah, if it's in the resolution, oh, that's all you need right. to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on it? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? No. Councilmember Spurlock? No. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed. Thank Mayor, you. Can we take let's a five-minute break? Let's take a five-minute break. Five-minute break. <laughs> Thank you. I went before we started. <laughs> she said, hit stop. I am confused with all this different.